In today's terrifying review, we're going to be having a look at the Rubies, A Nightmare on Elm Street. This is the House of Horror Deluxe Edition Replica Glove. So with this glove comes a little bit of a backstory. I ended up having to pick this up on eBay as this was an, a slightly older Ruby's release. And I definitely wanted to pick it up, but unfortunately the seller and in the listing that they had provided did not indicate that this, this section here of the glove from this point onward, this was completely off as well as this one right here. So ultimately when I got the glove in the mail, uh, opened up the box. The box, of course, was slightly disheveled, but that's okay. I mean, it was an older box after all. But these were completely loose. This one and this one were sitting rattling around loose inside the box. The only ones that were legitimately attached were these two finger plates here, and you know, the rivets are still in place. So unfortunately, some construction later, I tried to find replacement tools. I ended up ultimately just gluing, as you can see here, I glued this plate on, and this one I glued and was able to find the, act the extra rivet that was inside just rattling around in the box. This one just did not have the rivet. It got lost over the course of time. It's ended up somewhere. So unfortunately, it's not 100% of a poseable glove, as these fingers here would still be able to swivel back and forth. These ones here, unfortunately, are completely glued now in place. What we are getting, however, though, is a really good representation of the glove, except for one aspect. And it's probably, the, it's probably something that you're seeing right now and thinking the exact same thing. Ruby's Desley generally make great Freddy gloves. They make a lot of other good Halloween releases, but Freddy gloves is something that they still continue to struggle with. And a lot of people suggested picking up the metal glove. Uh, and I will admit this, the glove metal parts are actually really good. In fact, it is comparable to some of the custom gloves that you can get on the market on, on you know through the websites and stuff like that. The plates are good. It's a nice dense metal. As you can see, a very thick, thick metal. These are all metal. Unfortunately, the rivets are plastic, which I, I'm not a big fan of, but these, the main uh, palm plate is metal. The individual knuckle, knuckles or first knuckles are all metal. And then these are all metal, including the blades. Yes, the blades themselves, ladies and gentlemen, the blades are real metal, as you can probably hear the blades rattling and banging against each other. They are not sharp. Uh, they are they are flattened on the underside, so there's no actual sharp blade to it. Um, the blade itself is decent enough. I mean, again, a good thickness. Kind of a little too thick, but again, that's not too much the issue for me. Uh, some of it, I don't know if it's rust. I've got this kind of brown on here. It might very well just be paint that's on a couple of the blades. But generally, the blades are decent, the knuckles are decent, again, a good thickness of metal. So let's now talk about the disappointing part of it. For as much time as Ruby's spent to construct this in metal, you would think that they would have spent just as much time, if not more, to worry that the glove that all this was being attached to was of a good quality. And I have to be honest here, the glove is terrible. It's very, very cheap. It's almost, it would be hard to describe this as a garden glove. It would almost be easier to describe this as a kitchen dishwashing rubber glove that somehow ends up having a material more so like a suede on the outside. But the thickness of the grade of material is pretty sad. It's hard to even make it out here. Like the stitch work and stuff is very, very poorly done. They've splattered 
little dollops of black paint all over it. I have absolutely no reason why. It makes no sense, no rhyme, no reason. They just simply doused little, it's like somebody just took a paintbrush and just went like this and dabbed little splotches of black paint everywhere. You got some here on the, like right below the fingers. Got some all over the fingers. Some green is in there as well. Why not? Let's just throw some green in there. There's a little bit on the finger. But it's just a really, really cheap glove. I'm disappointed, actually, that Ruby's spent so much time to do this to only add it to a really crappy glove. Um, I would have even entertained the idea, despite the fact that one of the, obviously, two of my fingers are, are uh, were removed and broken. I had to replace those and glue them. I would be very close to entertaining the idea of just removing the glove completely and finding myself a really high-end uh, worker's glove and just doing a little bit of customization to it, painting it so it looks like the movie, and then just attaching it myself to this. This is really good. This is really bad. Uh, to get it on your hand, as you could probably expect, is a little. there's a little bit more involved. It's a little easier, mind you, to get onto your hand, providing you can actually get yourself around. The fingers, I find, are terrible. Let me actually show you if I show, show you what's happening inside here. The fingers are a bunched up, just horrible, horrible state. And I'll pull one finger out so you can see here. Like does that that doesn't even it almost looks like it's synthetic. It doesn't look like it's a real gloved material. But try as your best. Try as best as you can to get your fingers all through here. You might have to actually take like a screwdriver or some smaller object than your fingers to kind of get your to get this little area worked open so you can actually fit your fingers inside here. Many, many minutes later, I managed to get my fingers actually through, but still not the greatest. It the material is so bad, so bad in the fingers that it's impossible. And you can even see too where they started seaming right there. There's the start of the finger. Here's where my fingers are. Like I can barely get all my fingers actually in place to the point where these fingers, about this is about the only finger that I have full control over. The other ones here are just draping out of control, just, just flopping all over the place. Again, like the glove, this part looks so good. This just is horrible. This is crap at best. Uh, Rubies really should be ashamed of themselves that they would have spent as much time to put the care into making these metal and then only to really drop the ball when it comes to the actual glove. I think I might ultimately just take, as I mentioned, the glove completely off. This is gonna be perfectly salvageable. I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna find myself a replacement glove that I think deserves a Freddy Krueger uh, glove much better than what this is. This doesn't even deserve to be a kid's, uh, you know, a very cheap kid's uh, toy that you would find at the dollar store. The glove is just, just terrible. Uh, there's no real adjustments to it. You can see that there's like an elastic on the inside. There's a tag, Nightmare on Elm Street on the side. That's released by Ruby's. Again, just really disappointing. Uh, from a paint standpoint, by the way, as well, which I didn't really spend a lot of time to talk about, the paint here is really actually pretty good. They've got a nice combination of coppers and some darker browns there as well. Could have added just a little bit to like these, and I wish that these were not plastic, but those are all things that I'm perfectly willing to live with. The glove itself, though, is not something I can live with at all. This needs changing, and it needs changing, I would say, fast. Uh, moving, by the way, the individual fingers, if you can actually get them underneath, these are also metal as well. A very thin metal, mind you, but they are still metal. Uh, moving the fingers is not so much the issue once you can eventually get your finger inside. You can see I can move the blade perfectly fine. These ones, though, eh, not, not really all that much. It's got a good bit of weight to it, as one could expect to find, because, again, the metal blades, these all being metal, it does have a lot of weight to it, so it does feel like a good quality glove, up to the point that you have to deal with the glove part end of it. And there's some irony to the fact that for a Freddy glove, the 
the one thing you wouldn't want to be disappointing is the one thing that's making this glove disappointing, and it's this glove right here. So yes, it's a little disappointing that my particular one that I picked up through eBay unfortunately had a few broken fingers that needed to be mended. But that aside, and a little bit of glue later, the glove as a whole is really good. I like the fact that they incorporated real metal, which is not something that we got have gotten a lot from the Ruby's company. Unfortunately though, for as much effort and time that they put into giving us real metal, the glove, on the other hand, no pun intended, is disastrous. It's cheap, it's flimsy, and it really doesn't sell the fact that this glove has metal. For as much time that they put into the metal aspects of the glove, I wish they could have spent nearly as much effort, or at least an equal amount of effort, to give us a decent glove that could have been attached to that. This is a great replica, but I gotta, um, I gotta admit, the glove aspect of it really ends up letting this glove down. And for the price of it, and being an older release, I would much more recommend, say, going the route of a NECA replica glove, maybe over this one instead. Pick this one up, but in all honesty, I would think maybe a little bit of deconstruction might be required, where you can actually get yourself a real decent glove, and I would maybe take off the metal plates and the metal uh, brackets and, and knuckles, take those all off and put them on a much better glove, which is really something that Ruby should have done right from the very beginning instead of giving us this cheap, flimsy excuse for a glove. Needless to say, today's spookerific review, we were having a look at the Rubies, A Nightmare on Elm Street, New Line Cinema's House of Horror. This was the deluxe edition Freddy replica glove. With Spottober coming to sadly an end, there's going to be a couple more videos still lined up. This may very well be the last video lined up. But if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe to this channel, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. And even though Spottober is over, there's still many more videos lined up. We still got Christmas right around the corner as well, so stay tuned for that. As always, guys, thanks for watching, as you always do. I'll see you next time. <laughs>